Uh, in terms of today, we have a deputation um, on item 16, Central City Activation. David Lynch, please come to the table. I do have a hard copy of what I'm going to present. Thank you. So. Someone will come and pass that round. Hi, David. You've been here before, so you know the drill. Thank um, you very got much. Ten minutes, uh, including any questions. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to councillors, uh, Madam Mayor, for this opportunity of being here today. I um, became aware of this report quite late, um, and as you know, I'm someone that has been involved uh, professionally in a number of deputations uh, since the earthquake making various observations, all with the, I guess, the end objective of making sure that as we move forward with recovery, we're doing things right. So, look, I've got some concerns about this report. This deputation before you now is, I guess, an initial view I've taken in consultation with some people. And so I would say that I apologise to the typos for a start. And if, in fact, some of the assumptions I've made aren't necessarily accurate, I apologise in advance for that as well. So getting started, I think it would be fair to say that we all want an accessible, vibrant, thriving central city that welcomes visitors, embraces residents, and so there's no argument that we must create a place where people want to live, play, explore, visit, set up businesses, hold conferences, attend major sporting events and concerts, as some of you did recently. From my initial review and in discussions with others, it would not be unreasonable to conclude that the proposed Central City Activations Events Attraction Package is somewhat of a knee-jerk reaction and ad hoc. I have spoken to a prominent inner city property owner who asked not to be identified. He is passionate about the city moving forward, hospitality and retail, and he's disappointed that he wasn't aware of this today. It strikes me, and I say this with the greatest respect, that the authors might not understand or could be in denial over the actual realities of the impediments confronting the bars and restaurants in the city. And I say that with the greatest respect without wanting to offend anybody. I agree with the New Zealand Council report of the 7th of August, which I'm sure you have all been circulated by council staff, what's stopping residential development in the CBD? And in their view, there are a number of opportunities to entice residents and visitors back into the central city, and they're listed there. Free car parking, improved transport, completion of the anchor projects, a clear strategic vision for the central city, and incentives as, such as rate release, etc. Some of these things are familiar to you. With, while there are several, I say, potential solutions that were unearthed in the report, it argues ultimately most of these are tweaking at the fringes and won't structurally change the current market dynamics that are correct, and there's no silver bullet. The report suggests that the key focus should be on growing the end user base demand for the CBD, residential properties by promoting Christchurch as a South Island lifestyle, business, events and education hub. In my opinion, until we, and when I say we, the Council and everyone involved in supporting the Council, have a clear strategic vision for the central city and beyond, and develop a focused and cohesive marketing campaign, tweaking at the fringes is simply a waste of time. Concerns. I'm astonished to find that the CCC uh, event strategy that staff still believe the continuation of food markets in Cathedral Square on Friday nights is helping the very businesses that this report is focused on assisting. And again, I say that with the greatest respect to those guys that are in there, but 
The realities are there is a direct, there, this is in direct competition to an already, as I describe, hypo competitive market of restaurants, bars and food courts that have made a major financial commitment to the CBD. And I question the judgment as to why staff perceive the need to increase, in my view, unnecessary competition. Every suvalaki that's sold on the Friday night in the square is a suvalaki that isn't sold by someone that's made a commitment to a retail store permanently. I hope that's clear. So where is the hard data in this report that identifies some of the basics, remembering that you as elected members have to be fully informed before you commit any dollars moving forward? And I'm not saying the, the overall, I guess, objectives of what people are trying to do is wrong, but I'm questioning how robust this has been thought through. For example, the market segments, demographics, income groups, central city, suburban restaurants, tourist business visitors, there seems to be no information. The problem of quantifying actually what is the problem and where's the re um, return on investment. What's happened to Explore? Launched recently, and we were told it was going to be the CBD economic activator through the winter months and profile the city globally. What's happened there? And I'm concerned that Christchurch NZ has this campaign running, and we don't seem to know how successful it has or hasn't been. Where is the marketing data explaining why there is uh, now a requirement and justification for this uh, consideration before you today? Why is this report, why does it not include a CBD representative? As it stands, it says, there's a delegated authority of council staff in Christchurch NZ, but there's no business representative other than an indication of some level of engagement. As reported in the press, Joanna Myers said, the central city has experienced good retail growth for December, but spending was expected to soften in winter, so it was important to increase the profile of the central city during the, uh, this period locally and nationally. I'd respectfully suggest there's no point in pursuing an ad hoc campaign to capture customers that simply aren't there or they've already purchased a bus ticket and they've gone somewhere else. I don't think the writers of this report actually understand some of the fundamentals. So in conclusion, councillors, I fully appreciate the intention of everyone involved in this report. I apologise if some are upset, but I suggest it's time to let this lie on the table. Go away and do a little bit of work. I'm available, I'll bring some people to the table confidentially and we can have a chat and maybe the end outcome can be far better than I believe you're currently going to get if you approve this today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you David for your um, deputation and your offer of help, um, which I'm sure will be gratefully received. Um, are there any questions from the councillors? No? Okay, well thanks very much for coming in, we'll consider the report later.